Let's talk about how to calculate angle measures using corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, or consecutive interior angles that are formed by parallel lines and transversals. First, let's review what those things are. Corresponding angles are a pair of angles like angle 1 and angle 3, or angle 5 and angle 7, angle 2 and angle 4, or angle 6 and angle 8. Corresponding angles occupy the same position out of the four angles that are created by the intersection of two lines. So like angle 1 and angle 3, they're both in the top left-hand corner, so that makes them corresponding. And we learned that if the two lines that are intersected by the transversal are parallel, like how line A is parallel to line B, then each pair of corresponding angles is congruent. So 1 would be congruent to 3. We also learned about alternate interior angles, and if they are created from two parallel lines cut by a transversal, then they're congruent as well. So in this diagram, angle 2 and angle 7 would be alternate interior angles because they're on opposite sides of the transversal, once on the left and once on the right, and they're in between the two parallel lines, so that makes them interior. So since I have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, each pair of alternate interior angles would be congruent. And same thing with each pair of alternate exterior angles. They're the same idea as alternate interior, except they are on the outside of line A and line B, like angle 1 and angle 8. So in this diagram, 1 would be congruent to 8, and 4 would be congruent to 5. We also learned about consecutive interior angles, which are supplementary if the lines that have been intersected by the transversal are parallel. So this one's a little different. All the other ones are congruent to each other. Consecutive interior angles like angle 2 and angle 3, they are supplementary to each other. And it's kind of easy to double check that on most of the diagrams because one of your angles is going to look pretty acute, like how angle 2 is pretty small. And then one of your angles is going to look pretty obtuse, like how angle 3 is a little bit bigger. So you can see that they're not congruent just by looking at the diagram, which will lead you to the answer of they must be supplementary. So let's put all of this vocab into practice with some diagrams. For each diagram, I want us to calculate the value of x and state which theorem or postulate supports our reasoning. In this case, the angle labeled with x degrees and the angle labeled with 110 degrees, they're alternate exterior angles because one is above the transversal, the other one's below the transversal, and they're on the outside of the two parallel lines, which makes them exterior. And we know that alternate exterior angles are congruent to each other. So if this angle measures 110 degrees, then x must also measure 110 degrees. And my reason would be the alternate exterior angles theorem. On our next diagram, our two angles that have been labeled are both basically in the bottom left-hand corner out of the four angles that got created by the intersection of each line. x is in the bottom left-hand corner, and 86 is in the bottom left-hand corner. That makes them corresponding angles, and if the lines are parallel, which they are, then corresponding angles are equal to each other. So x must be 86 degrees by the corresponding angles postulate. Next up, we have an example that really doesn't even have anything to do with parallel lines, because is this line over here used at all to create either of these two angles? No. And that's because they're just vertical angles. We already knew how to calculate these angle measures even before we started this unit. Vertical angles are congruent, so that means that if this angle measures 108, then x measures 108 as well. On our next diagram, our two labeled angles are both on the left-hand side of the transversal. That makes them consecutive. And they're in between the two parallel lines, and that makes them interior. And what we know about consecutive interior angles is that they are supplementary. So I would be able to say that x plus 125 equals 180 degrees, because supplementary angles always add up to 180. So I would find an answer of 55 degrees for x, because of the consecutive interior angles theorem. Our next example, we have alternate, because they are on opposite sides of the transversal, and interior, because they're in between the two parallel lines. Alternate interior angles are congruent to each other, so x must measure 111 degrees by the alternate interior angles theorem. This is another example where one of the lines really doesn't even matter. This parallel line over here doesn't have anything to do with our two labeled angles, and that's because these are just a linear pair. 
We already knew how to calculate those before we started this unit. We've been talking about them since the beginning of the school year now. We know that linear pairs are supplementary, and supplementary means that they add up to 180. So I could write this equation, x plus 64 equals 180, and say that x must be 116 degrees by the linear pair postulate. All right, well, let's kick it up a notch and try to solve for more than one missing angle measure. For example, x and 75, they're vertical angles, so they must be equal by the vertical angles congruence theorem. And y and 75 are alternate interior angles, so they must be congruent by the alternate interior angles theorem. Or you could be saying, well, x, we just figured out that's 75, and x and y are corresponding angles, so they must be congruent. Either way, you would get to the same answer of y being 75 degrees, but your answer may vary depending on how you look at the diagram. For our next problem, x and 114 degrees, well, they're just vertical angles, so they would be congruent to each other. x must be 114. This angle that's labeled as 114 degrees and this angle that's labeled as y, they're really not any kind of a special pair of angles. We don't know a relationship between those two, so I really can't do anything with those two. But x and y are consecutive interior angles. They're both on top of the transversal and in between the two parallel lines. Since they're consecutive interior, they must add up to 180. And since I already know that x is 114 degrees, really I'm just figuring out what do I add to 114 to get to 180. And that gives me my answer for y, which is 66 degrees by the consecutive interior angles theorem. This time, x and the number labeled angle are a linear pair, which means they add up to 180. So I can say that x plus 137 equals 180, which means x must be 43 degrees by the linear pair postulate. Again, y and my numbered angle don't really have a relationship. There's nothing I can do there, but I can relate y back to x now that I know what it is. x and y are corresponding angles because they're both in the bottom left-hand corner, which means they must be congruent to each other. So since x is 43 degrees, y must be 43 degrees as well. Well, what am I supposed to do with this one? There's no numbers anywhere on this diagram. I just have one x and two y's. Well, what do you notice about these y's? Aren't they a linear pair? So you could think about it as y plus y equals 180 degrees. So that's 2y equals 180. In other words, y must be 90. So both of these y's happen to be right angles and that would be by the linear pair postulate. And now that I know that y is 90 degrees, well, x and y, well, x and this y, are corresponding angles, which means they would be congruent to each other. So x would be 90 degrees as well. And actually what that means for this diagram is that all of these angles are right angles. Every single one of these angles measures 90 degrees. All right, let's throw some algebra in here. We're gonna to have to set up equations in order to solve for x. Looking at my two labeled angles, they are on opposite sides of the transversal, and they're on the exterior of the two parallel lines, so that makes them alternate exterior angles. And what we know about alternate exterior angles, and what we know about alternate exterior angles is that they're congruent, which means the equation I can write is this. I'll set the two variable expressions equal to each other and then I'll solve. Subtract 8x from both sides and get 2x, add 4 to both sides to get 22, and divide both sides by 2 to get x equals 11. And actually, all it asks for is the value of the variable, so that's it. I'm done, as long as I also provide a justification. So x must equal 11 degrees by the alternate exterior angles theorem. Let's try another one. This time my two labeled angles are corresponding because they're both in the bottom right-hand corner out of the four angles that get created by the intersection of each line. So since they're corresponding angles, they must be congruent to each other. So I can set up an equation that looks like this. 19x minus 10, 19x minus 10 equals 14x plus 25. And now let's solve. Subtract 14x to get 5x, add 10 to get 25, and divide both sides by 5 to get 7. And again, make sure you provide a reason in the form of a theorem or a postulate for your final answer, x equals 7 because of the corresponding angles postulate. What about these two angles? What kind of pair of angles are they? 
Well, they're consecutive interior, right? They're both on the right-hand side of this transversal, and they're in between my two parallel lines. That makes them consecutive interior. And consecutive interior angles are supplementary, not congruent. So unlike our first two examples where we set the expressions equal to each other, that's not what I want to do this time. This time I need to add them up and set it equal to 180 degrees. So to solve this, I'm going to need to combine like terms. I get 18x and 18. So I'll subtract 18 and divide by 18, and I get an answer of x equals 9. And that would be because of the consecutive interior angles theorem. All right, I'd like you to pause the video and try this one on your own. Let's see how you did. These two angles are alternate interior angles because they are on opposite sides of the transversal, one's above, one's below, and they're in between the two parallel lines. Since they're alternate interior angles, they must be congruent, so the equation I'll write would look like this. I'll set the two expressions equal, and subtract 6x, add 4, divide by 3, and I get an answer of x equals 14. Don't forget to provide a theorem or a postulate, x equals 14, because of the alternate interior angles theorem. All right, and let's kick it up one more notch by having both algebra and two variables to solve for. In this situation, you need to solve with the expressions that have the same variable first. So by that I mean this expression has x, this expression has x, and this expression has y. I really can't do anything with y right now because I only have one of them. So instead, I'll focus my attention on the two that have x's. What kind of pair of angles are these two? Well, they would be consecutive interior because they're on the left side, the same side of the transversal, and they're in between the two parallel lines. Since they're consecutive interior, they must be supplementary, so the equation I'll write would look like this. 19x plus 1 plus 16x plus 4 equals 180. So let's solve. 19 and 16 gives me 35. 1 and 4 gives me 5. Subtract 5 from both sides and divide by 35, and I get my first answer of x equals 5 and that would be because of the consecutive interior angles theorem. Okay, cool, now I know what x is, how is that going to help me to figure out y? Well, I'm going to have to take x being 5 and plug that 5 into one of my expressions so I can figure out what these angles actually measure. So instead of 19 times x plus 1, I'm going to say it's 19 times 5 plus 1, which would be 95 plus 1, which is 96. So this angle right here measures 96 degrees. And that's useful because this angle right here that's labeled with a y, and this angle right here that we just figured out is 96 degrees, they're corresponding angles, which means that they would be congruent to each other. So I can set 13y minus 8 equal to 96. Add 8, divide by 13, and I find out that y equals 8 because of the corresponding angles postulate. Let's try another one like that. Again, the first thing you need to do is identify which variable you're solving for first. Oftentimes it's alphabetical and you'll solve for x before y, but not always. So let's see what we have. We have one expression with a y, and one expression with an x, and a second expression with an x. So it looks like I'm going to solve for x this time because I have two expressions that have x's. And I'll get back to y in a little bit. So 9x minus 2 and 6x plus 22, these two angles are alternate interior angles because they're on opposite sides of the transversal and because they're in between the two parallel lines. So since they're alternate interior, I'm going to set them equal to each other and solve, subtract 6x, add 2, divide by 3, x equals 8. And that's because of the alternate interior angles theorem. Now that I know that x is 8, I can plug it in to figure out the measure of this angle. The reason I'm picking this one is because the 6x plus 22 and the 13y minus 7, they're not a special kind of pair of angles. So even if I knew what this angle measurement was right here, it wouldn't really help me very much to figure out the value of y. But if I look at these two angles, they're a linear pair. So I know that they add up to 180 degrees, and I can use that information to solve for y. So I'm going to plug 8 into this expression and simplify. Turns out that this angle measures 70 degrees. And since these two angles are a linear pair, that means they add up to 180. So I can write this equation. 13y minus 7 plus 70 equals 180. Combine your minus 7 and your plus 70 to get 63. 
subtract 63 from both sides, and divide by 13. And I find out that x equals 9, and that was because of the linear pair postulate. All right, it's your turn. Pause the video and try this one on your own. Let's see how you did. This one was a little bit weird because you don't start by solving for x. There's only one x on the screen, so I can't solve for it yet. Instead, I'm going to start by solving for my y's because I see two of them. And specifically, these two angles are alternate exterior angles because they're on opposite sides of the transversal and on the exterior of my two parallel lines. So since they're alternate exterior angles, I know I can set them equal to each other and then solve. Subtract 13y from both sides, and I get negative 2y equals negative 16. Divide both sides by that negative 2, and you get a positive 8 for y. And that was because of the alternate exterior angles theorem. Now that I know that y is 8, I can plug it in to figure out the measure of this angle or the measure of this angle. In this case, it actually wouldn't matter which one you plug in, because if I'm trying to solve for x, well, 5x plus 8 and the 11y, they are corresponding angles, so I could set them equal. And 5x plus 8 and 13y minus 16, they're vertical angles, so I could also set them equal. So in this case, there's actually two different ways that you could solve. I'm choosing to plug into the 13y minus 16, and I'll end up using vertical angles to solve. Let's take a look. 13 times 8 minus 16 is 104 minus 16, which is 88. So this angle right here measures 88 degrees. And these two angles are vertical angles, which means I can set them equal to each other. So 5x plus 8 equals 88. Subtract 8, divide by 5, and I get an answer of x equals 16. And for me, I use the vertical angles congruence theorem. But you might have a different reason, but still know that x equals 16, if you had plugged 8 into 11y instead and then you said these two equal to each other, then you would have gotten x equals 16, but your reason would have been the corresponding angles postulate. All right, let's kick it up just one more notch and have three parallel lines instead of just two. The properties are still the same of which angles are congruent and which angles are supplementary. There's just more diagram to look at. So let's take a look. The angle that's labeled with 127 and the angle that's labeled as x, those are corresponding angles because they're both basically in the bottom right-hand corner of the four angles that got created by the intersection of the lines. So since these are corresponding angles, they must be congruent. So x is 127 degrees because of the corresponding angles postulate. x and y are consecutive interior angles. They're on the same side of the transversal, they're both underneath of it, and they're in between the two parallel lines. That makes them consecutive interior, and that makes them supplementary. So y is not 127 degrees. In fact, if you look at the measure of angle y on this diagram, it's obviously not 127 degrees because it's acute. So instead, you should be adding up to 180 degrees. 180 minus 127 gives me my answer of 53. All right, and this is about as hard as I can make it. This is a combination of everything today that we have three parallel lines and we have algebraic expressions and we have two variables to solve for. Let's get it done. So I've got a 5x degrees here, and I've got a 95 degrees here, and those are alternate exterior angles because they're on opposite sides of the transversal, and they're on the outside of the two parallel lines. So I can set them equal and solve. x must be 17 because of the alternate exterior angles theorem. Okay, so now that I know x is 17, I can plug it in and figure out what this angle measurement right here is, Plugging in 5 times 17, obviously that gives me 95, right? That's the angle measure I would expect because this angle is 95. These two angles are alternate exterior. They should end up being the same number. But how am I going to use that to figure out this 4y plus 5? The 95 degree angles, neither of them are a special kind of pair of angles with the 4y plus 5. So instead, we need to use other angle pair relationships to move this 95 around to put it in a better place somewhere that would put it so that it becomes a special kind of pair of angles with the 4y plus 5. For example, wouldn't I know that this angle right here is also 95 degrees? Because they're corresponding angles. This 5x, which we figured out was 95, this angle is in the bottom left-hand corner of these four angles, and this 95 is in the bottom left-hand corner of these four angles. So I can assume that this angle is 95 degrees as well. And that's beneficial because now I have a special kind of pair of angles. 95 and this 4y plus 5, they're a linear pair. 
which means they add up to 180. So I can say that 95 plus 4y plus 5 equals 180, and then just solve. 95 and 5 is 100, subtract 100, divide by 4, and I get my answer y equals 20 because of the linear pair postulate. All right, grand finale, please pause the video and try this one on your own. Let's see how you did. I see two y's in this diagram, so that's what I'm gonna solve for first. And the two angles that are labeled with y's are alternate interior angles. So the first thing I'm going to do is set those two expressions equal to each other and solve. So I'm gonna subtract 13y, add eight, and divide by seven. Then I figure out that y equals six because of the alternate interior angles theorem. So now I can take six and plug it into either of my expressions and figure out what their angle measurements would be. So I can say it's 20 times six minus eight, which would simplify to 112 degrees. So both of these angles would end up being 112 degrees. But somehow I have to use that information to figure out x. But you'll notice that this 17x and this 20y minus eight aren't a special kind of pair of angles. But what if I moved this 112 to be right here instead? These are vertical angles, right? So I know that whatever 20y minus 8 is, this angle has to be the same thing. And we figured out that that was 112, so both of these angles have to be 112. And that's beneficial because now I see that 17x and the 112 are consecutive interior angles, which means they would add up to 180 degrees. Alternatively, you might have noticed that this 17x and this 13y plus 4, they're consecutive interior angles as well. And since if you were to plug in 6 for this y, you would get 112 again, you would end up setting up the exact same equation. So let's solve. Subtract 112 and divide by 17, and I find out that x equals 4. And depending on how you did this, you might just say that it was the consecutive interior angles theorem, or you could have said that it was the vertical angles congruence theorem if you did this part right here and the consecutive interior angles theorem. And that's all you need to know about alternate interior, alternate exterior, consecutive interior, and corresponding angles, and how you can use those relationships to calculate angle measures. In our next lesson, we're going to be talking about how we can use these angle pair relationships to write proofs.